Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Weather 101 forecast. We are having a fantastic start to your Sunday morning. Now, in today's forecast, we have a lot of new data to go over regarding this snowstorm within the next couple of days. First off, though, I want to talk about the very cold air that we're seeing this morning. If any of you guys went to church this morning or just were out and about this morning, a lot of you guys in the country will notice it is frigid outside. Um, and I even noticed it this morning. Um, we're talking negatives as we get in across areas of North and South Dakota. We're talking very, very cold temperatures down into the Ozarks, through Kansas, Oklahoma, and through the Tennessee and Ohio Valley. We're talking high teens to low 20s uh, throughout a large chunk of the country. And with that, we had some very, very strong wind gusts through the overnight hours into early this morning, um, and it's just been it's, it's been very cold to say the least. Um, not much snow is melting today, especially from what's fallen. Um, and talking about that, let's go ahead and go over to the observed snowfall to take a look at what actually fell. Um, and we can actually go ahead and we'll zoom in through the regional view here so you guys can see amounts. So... This snowstorm overall, it did underperform, but still it caused some very, very dangerous travel conditions. Um, I forget exactly what interstate it was, but I believe it was in, the in, in Indiana. It was shut down for about six hours with a 50-car pileup. So even though we didn't get near as much snow as what we had thought, especially on the models, it definitely still was very, very impactful. Um, we can see some areas that did perform pretty close to where we had expected, and really a lot of those are within the pinks and reds here where we see the reds uh, which is very isolated um, into areas of Wisconsin and down through Illinois that's a, over a foot of snow and then we saw a generalized six to ten inches within the pinks there and then about three to five as you get into the darker blues and then one to three as you get into the lighter blues but that's really that's what we saw it, it, it was still once again a very impactful winter storm and we're going to get more snow that's going to fall on top of that um, and so we'll get into that later in this forecast First, though, I want to talk about the National Weather Service current hazards and advisory displays. We do have a lot of scattered winter weather advisories, and that's what's indicated in your purple here. We see that in effect for areas of northwest Kansas, or sorry, northwest Missouri um, into central and eastern Kansas, getting into Kansas City, as well as for southeastern Nebraska, portions of Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, or, uh, sorry, Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, and into Illinois and Michigan as well areas of West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, and New York, as well as for areas of Colorado, Utah, um, New Mexico, and some areas of Wyoming. We also have a freeze watch issued for the higher elevations in California, um, so keep an eye out on that as well. We also do have some high wind watches in effect for areas of Wyoming, and we also have some wind advisories as we get into upstate New York. So you mix these wind advisories with some winter weather, not a very fun time to say the least. The first thing I want to talk about today is we're going to look at the NAM 3K. So we are within the 60-hour range for this snowstorm, so we can use higher resolution data. Um, and, and it's a lot more accurate when you go higher resolution, obviously. Um, and so this is going to be a little bit of an upgrade from what we've been looking at the last couple of days because we had been out of range with the short-range models to see this storm. So once again, exciting things to go over in this forecast. Time and date, as always, is in the upper left-hand corner. You can follow along as I go through the models here. Once again, starting off with an AM3 kilometer. So as we move through the rest of the day today, this is by around 10 p.m. tonight, we see our setup for this system. Once again, we have some energy down here into the Gulf, and we have this energy coming off of the Rockies. These two are going to combine about yay, uh, and then eventually move off to the east. Once again, we're still watching exactly where this is going to uh, combine, but you see our system is already on shore, so a lot of this is pretty good data at this point. Um, but by the time we get into around 3 a.m., this is 6 a.m. Uh, by tomorrow morning, we are seeing some heavy bands of snow setting up across central Kansas, um, some light snow into areas of Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri. We also do have some pretty heavy rain um, as you get down into southern Texas. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and once again, these two are going to be our two areas of energy that's going to combine for this snowstorm. So as we go into around 11 a.m., uh, tomorrow on your Monday, we do see some uh, snow breaking out across areas of Kansas City and into Iowa, um, St. Joseph, areas like that. We still have some very heavy rain. Um, we see our 540 line. That's your freezing line. We're going to watch that as we progress throughout the day. Um, we see by around 7 p.m., we start to see a lot of mixing going on across areas of Arkansas. 
We're seeing this band of snow starting to stretch a lot more, getting into areas of the Ohio Valley and into the Great Lakes. Once again, the newest data really doesn't show this uh, combining until pretty far east. And once again, I've been talking about this for the last couple of days. The model trends have kept doing that as we've progressed. And really, um, I know we've had a, uh, in my comments, I've seen a lot of people that have disagreed with the euro, but it actually panned out pretty well this time, surprisingly, um, which it always tends to show a farther east path. Um, and then it either goes with what the GFS starts to say or, or the GFS starts to move to what the euro says. Um, but definitely the euro has been pretty accurate so far in this entire storm. Um, this is really, I mean, if you would go to the Euro a couple of days ago, even through yesterday, this is exactly really what the setup looked like. And then it moves through the northeast. We're going to be seeing some very heavy snow. Um, this is by around 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning. Um, this is by around 8 a.m. on your Tuesday morning commute. Very heavy snow moving through. Um, and then eventually uh, heading out by around the 3rd. Now, in terms of the snowfall, um, this is what that map looks like. Nothing crazy, but definitely some heavy snow as we get into the northeast um, and still some potential for some heavy snow as we get into areas of northern Missouri. Uh, but really overall, throughout this area right here, we're looking at about one to three inches of snowfall. Really higher amounts are going to be concentrated along the Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa border there. Now, as we move this on to the next model, we're going to be looking at the HRRR, which is the High Resolution Rapid Refresh, arguably the most accurate model on the market. Um, it is the most accurate model. It gets updated every hour. But we're going to take a look at the setup for this system. Once again, on the HRRR, we're going to move this back a little bit. So as we move through the rest of the day, you'll see some snow breaking out across the northeast from our first initial winter storm. Um, that's been moving out. We see our next area of energy. We see, let me switch to this. We see our first area right here once again, and we see our second area right here. Just keep an eye out on that as we progress. This current view is 7 p.m. tonight. This is by around midnight tomorrow morning. This is by around 6 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and what we see with the HRRR is bringing a little bit of snow flurries farther down south, um, which really it shouldn't accumulate to much. Um, I really don't see anything accumulating for Oklahoma. I don't really see much accumulating for northwest Arkansas. Um, I think they're too far south, uh, really, for any heavy amounts of snow to develop, for any stickage on the roads, because um, there's going to be wet roads, and it's not necessarily going to be freezing just yet. Now, as we move through this, though, you can see the HRRR brings the snow farther west, which is a trend that we're going to monitor, um, and I'll be keeping you guys updated. Also, just to kind of plug this, I do have a Facebook page now. Um, it is titled Weather 101. I will be posting updates on that. Um, so if you guys want to go follow that, you guys will get more updates throughout the day. Um, that's what I'll be posting on um, in, instead of the community page. It's a little bit easier. Um, so once again, if you guys haven't followed that, definitely go do so. Um, once again, it's Weather 101 on Facebook. Um, you guys can get more updates there. Um, and we'll be monitoring these model trends. Once again, the HRRR brings the snow a little bit farther uh, east, or sorry, west than what the NAM 3K, which brought it away over here. So you can already see the, uh, the differences here. So we're going to be keeping an eye out on that as we move through the rest of the day today. Does bring some sleet in there potentially as well, and then brings a very heavy snowstorm for the northeast. Now this is as far out as the model run goes, but that's where we're at by the end of the 48-hour time frame. Snowfall looks like 1 to 3 inches in the blues. Um, it shows the highest amounts in northern Missouri. Um, and then as you get into the grays, that's about a dusting to maybe a half an inch of snowfall. Once again, though, I think really anywhere south of the border of Kansas and Missouri, I really don't see any sort of accumulation out of this. I really don't even see much accumulation as we get into these areas right here. But I do think that we might see maybe up to a half an inch of snow or sleet um, in some of those areas. But really, though, the main impact for this winter storm is going to be through the Ohio Valley, through the Great Lakes, getting into Erie, getting up through Watertown and Buffalo, New York as well as some uh, lake effect areas of Michigan as well. Uh, but really, once again, comparing this to last snowstorm, not as much snow, but still, once again, even our last snowstorm didn't perform very well, and it still caused some major travel impacts. So keep that in mind as we go through. 
Um, and once again, more updates will be on my Facebook page. Here is the National Weather Service blend of models, which takes a lot of different models into account and combines them into an average. This shows a little bit different of a picture. Um, it shows more of our heavy snow, once again, in northern Missouri, and then especially through the northeast. Um, but still shows maybe potentially a dusting to an inch for some of these areas in southern Kansas, southern Missouri, southern Kentucky, and to West Virginia. So we'll be keeping an eye out on this. Once again, though, generally one to three if you're in the blues. If you're in the darker blues, you're looking at three to five. If you're in the purples here, you're looking at about six to eight, six to ten, potentially. Now, the next thing that I want to go over before we end this forecast is I want to look at the probability for any area receiving an inch of snowfall or greater um, for this event. And as we move through, looks like areas of southern Nebraska and into southern Indiana, or sorry, southern Iowa, southern Nebraska could get about an 80% chance of seeing over an inch of snowfall. Same thing goes for northern Missouri. We're looking at about a 50 to 70% chance up there for some of these areas. And then as we progress this, you can see it starts to show. Um, Maybe the snow starting to develop around here rather than over here, like the NAM 3K was showing. We have the ensembles in agreements with this, in agreements with this, as well as the HRRR. So we'll keep an eye out on this trend, um, but we could be seeing some more snow than expected here, which really it, it won't be much. It'll be an inch, if that. But definitely something to keep an eye out on because this could cause minor winter weather travels for some of those areas. Um, and then as we progress this system through the Northeast, really. A lot of these areas are going to be getting some heavy snow. We see really chances upwards of over almost 100% into northwestern Pennsylvania, and really just generally 60 to 80% through a long or through a large region of the Ohio Valley through the Northeast. So, we'll be keeping an eye out on this very very closely. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns about your location, let me know down in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.